Our Father and our God, in the precious name of Jesus, we do come. Thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to assemble one to, once again together as brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we look forward to this day, Lord. You know our hearts. You know the importance of us having fellowship with those that believe the same as we do. You know, Lord God, about those that may have a question in their mind of who Jesus is. We pray that this service today will open not only minds, but open hearts yes. to accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. We bless you, Father God, for everyone that has come into this house of prayer. Yes. We pray, Lord, for the word that will be read. We pray, Lord, for the songs that will be sung. We pray, Lord, for the prayers that will be lifted up to you. And we also pray for the preacher man that he's able to deliver to us the word that you've put on his heart so that someone may come running saying, what must I do to be saved? And he can explain that crystal clearly that it is in Jesus' name that if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts, we shall be saved. So help us, Lord, as we accept you, the Holy Spirit, and all those that are Assembled in your name, we pray this prayer, and a special prayer for our brother in Christ, Brother Herman Carter. Uh, heal him in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, and I pray that all those who love the Lord will say, Amen. 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 <clears throat> Again, I'm uh, Deacon Emmett Anderson, and I'm substituting for Herman Carter. You heard the prayer. Uh, he's having some heart difficulty in his legs. Uh, we sent him a message from Deacon is Mabel Colbert as to how to get rid of that. And for those of us that have cramps in our legs every now and then, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of mustard will help it to go away, if you will. We're going to open with an opening selection from the designated singing group. Uh, we're going to follow that with scripture, reading by Deacon John Newsom, opening prayer by Deacon Ed Smith. And then I'll come back up to introduce uh, the gentleman that we all love and love to give to in the name of Jesus, uh, Trustee Chester. We can have our service in that order.
it is a great day to be alive in, in the house of our Lord. Uh, today, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we come to you again at the end of a long week to just say thank you. To thank you for all that you have given us and all that you have brought us through and what you will do for us in the future. Because all that we have is what you've given us. So guide us today, Father God. And let us give thanks for those who could be with us today. Those who need prayer. And you know what each and every one of us need, Father God. So guide us, Father God and give us those things because those things that you give us will be the things that will get us to the place that you would have us to be in our lives. Bless those, Father God, that have been impacted from this pandemic. Bless those that have been healed, that have came through this pandemic. Father God, we know you have the plan, the plan for all of us. Let us stay focused on you in our daily lives and all that we do and stay trusting in you. Let us recall and remember all of the things that you have brought us through. Let us look back over our lives today and just reflect from where we came to where we are today. All because of your grace and your mercy, Father God. We recognize that. So by us being here today to worship you and to give you thanks, that is our recognition for what all you have done for us. Yeah. Bless the ministries of this great church, Father God. Bless all of that put into this church, Father God, to bring us through the things of this pandemic. Bless the pastor and his family. Be with him. Be with him today as he brings the word. Let the word flow through him as you decrease him to bring the word to us, to our ears. So guide us, Father God. Let us be recharged and rejuvenated as we leave this place today with one focus in mind, is to serve you in all that we do. Let us stay faithful and stay focused. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. We were blessed by the, the young vocalists. I call them the Michelle Trio. Uh, we're going to ask the master for ceremonies if he would be kind enough to introduce himself. I think it may be Parker. Parker, do you have someone that you sing with? What's her name? Parker's big sister is Victoria. <laughs> what a joy to see those young people sing. All right. What a joy to see them sing. They come every first Sunday, and we're just so happy to have them, along with their mom, Michelle, and the accompanist, uh, Sister Hoffman. Yes, Sister Hoffman. Yes. What a joy. We're glad everyone is here today. Uh, we are gradually increasing the numbers again after all we've been through with the coronavirus and all these other viruses that want to seem to be attached. But we're going to keep being strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We thank Brother Johnny for that scripture from the book of Psalms. And we thank you, uh, Brother Johnny, for that. And we thank Brother Smith, Deacon Smith, for the fervent prayer, and now we're going to get into the portion of the program where we all can participate. I want to introduce to you uh, Trustee Charles Chittister, who's going to give us some instructions on to how to give uh, so that the Lord can be blessed based on our giving, and then we will have that with a uh, prayer for me for the offering, and then we have Another music selection from Victoria and Parker and the other members of that singing aggregation. So, 
this time, Reverend Chile, if you will come and give us direction. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope everyone is enjoying the uh, service uh, so far. Uh, I'd like to uh, give thanks uh, from Reverend Johnson and the uh, members of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church to a couple of uh, new uh, people that are here this morning. So we welcome you and I hope you enjoy the service and continue to come back and continue to bring your friends with you. So uh, it's offering time now, and uh, I'm going to give you some uh, ways to continue to give to the Mount Calvary Baptist Church, whether you're here or not. Uh, the first way you can mail in your contributions to the Mount Calvary Baptist Church at 4325 Cambridge Road, Fairfax, Virginia, 22030. You can also use PayPal. You can open up your own PayPal account or you can go to the Mount Calvary website at mountcalvary.net or click on the donation window and follow the instructions. You can also use bill pay. You have to go to your bank to set up your bill pay account. You can set it up to pay weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, whichever you prefer. Uh, we uh, would like uh, each member to uh, do if, uh, whatever you can do. You know, we're not asking or, you know, your life savings, but any little bit can help. You know, we really do appreciate it. Um, right now, uh, the deacons are going to come to set up the offering for uh, this morning's uh, service. I uh, have one uh, little announcement else. Uh, we have a fundraiser that we just started, and it's for uh, the fruit that uh, you can order. Uh, with this, you can come to any trustee uh, of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. That's uh, Brother Johnny Newsom, there is uh, Sister Savelle Carter, Susan Pratt, Diane Haston, Lisa Richards, or myself, Charles Chittister, and most people just call me Chili. So if uh, you could uh, do that, we would really appreciate it. Uh, anything that can help the church is, uh, is, a, is a great thing. So right now, uh, Deacon Anderson will come with the offertory prayer. So God bless you. Have a great week, a great service, and uh, we all love you. Thank you, Brother Chile. You know, we cannot give God's giving, uh, and so I have the pleasure of doing an auditory prayer, and after that, we're going to sing the uh, All Things Come to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, you have blessed us in so many ways. We know that what we have is given to us, and now it's time for us to be able to give back to you a portion of our we know that we can't outbeat your giving. So if you would please accept our gifts yes. as gifts from the heart, that we may be able to continue to be of service not only to you, but to do the those that are in need. So in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Let's all say, Amen. 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 All things come.
young people before they started. Parker, if he knows you, he'll come and give you a big hug. Victoria, she'll wait until after the service to give you a big hug. So look for some hugs from the, from the younger people. Some of us older people need to learn how to do that too. Hug one another. Because that's what it's all about. God's love. God's love. Uh, this time of the program it gives me a great pleasure to introduce pastor of this church, Mount Calvary Baptist Church. That's uh, our pastor, Jeffrey Lee Johnson. Jeffrey Johnson. I almost ran into his middle name. But Jeffrey Johnson Sr. He's been around here for quite some years, 20-some years. And he's very proud to be the pastor of this uh, church. Which is 151 years old, and uh, he's consistent in bringing the word of God to the people of God, and equally to those that don't know God. Uh, so you may tap you on the shoulder and say, "We're going to go on a missionary journey uh, in the next two days, maybe 24 hours, maybe 72 hours." And the last time he made that announcement, he says, "We're going to meet right out." In front of the church, right here at the bus stop. Right. We're going to get on that bus stop, and we're going to have a little church service. We're going to talk about the Bible. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ. And anybody on that bus, based on the volume that Reverend Johnson has, is going to hear the word. <laughs> How many of you all know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
But so, uh, and he believes in God, and we believe in him, and we all believe in God. So at this time, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce the pastor, Mount Calvary. I know he has a few words before he begins to speak, but help me to welcome Pastor Jeffrey O. Johnson. Church, say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. All right. After our service is over, we do have an important announcement uh, that's going to be given to us. But also, I wanted to give a shout out. Some of y'all remember uh, Sergeant Jesus Banks. Uh, he has spent the last few years in Japan. And now he is in San Diego, California. He has been selected by the Marine Corps to go through the School of Recruiting. And he will be a recruiter in the fine state of Arkansas. And so he sends his greetings to the Mount Calvary Baptist Church in which he calls one of the finest and most loving congregations he has ever been a part of. Let's thank God for Sergeant Jesus. I'd like to thank Deacon Anderson for reminding us of this coming Tuesday. Now, we know many of you have to work and you have other obligations and you cannot be here, uh, but we need to start uh, doing what God has called us to do in the form of sharing the faith. So if you cannot be here, we ask that Tuesday at one o'clock that you will pray for whoever can be here. Um, our conversation is a tool of sharing Christ. Uh, Friday, I was with Reverend Howard Butler and his wife, uh, Michelle, and also, there was Reverend Dr. Alfred Jones, as well as uh, Reverend Dr. Henry Doring, and there was another preacher there as well. And we uh, had a meeting at the Cracker Barrel, but we were also talking about kingdom communication. In other words, we were talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we were talking about things that happen at church. We were talking about the Word of God. And uh, after we finished our meal, uh, some of the brothers had to go, but there was a white gentleman there, he and his wife. And he said, I want you to know we enjoy what y'all were talking about. Amen. Amen. And our communication can be spread. Sometimes we think the only way we can share Christ is, uh, I want to talk to you about the plan of salvation. Well, talk about it before you get to it. Whoever you're with, they, they may already be saved. Let your conversation be in a way that people will want to know what salvation is is all about. Amen? Amen. We draw your attention this morning to John chapter 12. We'll begin with the first verse. John chapter 1 beginning with, John chapter 12 that is, beginning with verse 1. Then six days before the Passover, 
Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. The poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Mm -hmm. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus we come, and Lord, we are so unworthy even to look upon the Word of God, but you have given us all Scripture, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the people of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Lord, use your word to help us and to guide us. Speak to us through John chapter 12, that we might not only know more about you, but we will know more of how you would have us to glorify you in this world. Lord, be with us. Deacon Carter healed his body and bless him with recovery that will be complete and speedy. In Jesus' name we pray that the people of God say amen. 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 Now we've been going through the Gospel of John and in this Gospel we have seen the presentation of the prophecy of the Old Testament, a parade of miracles and the proclamation of uh, of power through the presentation of Christ. Uh, this was not just an ordinary man. Yeah. There was something and still is something different about Jesus. As early as the 12th chapter uh, we are presented with the closing stages of his earthly ministry prior to Calvary. That takes us from chapter 12, verse 1, uh, to chapter, I mean to chapter 12, verse 50. In chapter 12, verse 1, we see the celebration of Lazarus. That's 
chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. And then uh, we see the triumphant entry of chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. And then the closing verses of verses 20 to 30 are some of the teachings of Jesus Christ. So as we look back at chapter 12, verse 1, we see that then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. And the Passover is a Jewish celebration that has been celebrated for over 3,000 years. Some say it's about 3,500 years that they have been celebrating the Passover. And in this celebration, they celebrate the deliverance of, from bondage in Egypt. This is one of the common denominators of the Jewish race and the African American race. That we suffer under the hands of harsh taskmasters, just like our Jewish brothers. And we pattern our prayer life from the Hebrew context because we wanted God to call someone to go down like Moses and to tell our Pharaoh, let my people go. In this context is the establishment of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Because after slavery, I don't, I don't know how they raised the money, but they, they got the money together to build a house to worship God. Yes. May 16th, 1870. And they most likely were the same individuals who waited all night long so that they would be emancipated on New Year's Day of 1863. We can relate to a meal that celebrates emancipation. A meal that celebrates deliverance. For Moses, told Pharaoh to let God's people go. You know of the 10 plagues and the 10th plague was to take the first born of the Egyptians. The reason why they call it the Passover is that Moses had given instructions from God to mark the doorposts of each household. And the Bible says, when I see the blood, that meant that the deaf angel would pass over. And when you connect the blood from the top of the entry of a home. And then you put blood to the left and to the right. Those key points gives the prefiguring of the cross. Amen. And it was at the cross where we first saw the light the burdens of our heart rolled away. It was there by faith. 
we received our sight. And now we are happy all the day, separated from God, but now united. I was one of those people who didn't want cable television anymore, so they, way back in the day, there was a company called Prime Star. And Prime Star would put a pole in your yard and they would attach to that pole a satellite dish. And, and you could get more channels than you knew what to do with because of the satellite dish. You know, there was a time when rabbit ears would give you at least eight channels. Some of them you didn't really want to watch. There was three channels that we watched the most. We watched ABC, we watched NBC, and we watched CBS. But lo and behold, then they added channel 20. Y'all remember channel 20. Then they added channel 32. And we said, oh my goodness, we are really progressing now. But now some people have three to 500 channels and they still only watch three. But Jesus increased the communication between heaven and earth as soon as that cross was set on Calvary. Now we have access to the throne of God. We don't have to go to the tabernacle. We don't have to wait until the priest goes into the holies of holies by himself. We can now approach the throne of God freely. Amen. Yes, we can relate yes, to deliverance every second Sunday, we have one of the officers of the church to read from Exodus chapter 12 and someone else reads from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and it shows the transition from Passover to the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, this is where Lazarus had been dead. You should be able to relate, relate to that as well, because when we was in the world, we, we were just as sinful as everyone else. Amen. When we were in the world, we were just as confused as everyone else. You went to a party, and you drank too much, and you had a splitting headache and you felt like you were going to throw up. You had to run to the bathroom. Your head was in the toilet. <laughs> then you ran and answered the phone and they say, hey, what a time we had last night. Yeah, let's do it again next week. <laughs> but then Jesus <laughs> saved <laughs> the hymn writer said, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the blissful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the captain of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Paul put it this way, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He did not raise from the dead. There was a celebration of new life because of the fact that we were raised just like Lazarus. You know, your, your old nature 
was supposed to die. Now, the problem with a lot of Christians in the church, listen, here's a practical application to new life in Christ. Even a lot of people in the church today, their conversation is one in which instead of thanking God for new life, they brag about what they used to do in the old nature. Man, I could drink more than a truck driver. Uh, and the thing, one, one, one thing that is also contaminating the church, you know, I'm glad to see everyone with their masks on. That's very good. But you know, one thing that contaminates the church is gossip. And people can gossip more effectively now uh, than when they was in the world, because in the world they knew they were wrong. But in the church, everyone act as if they hadn't sinned since they were baptized. Huh? And no, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You know, sometimes when you testify, you don't both be talking about how good you are. Number one, you need to testify on how good God is. Yes, but sometimes when you testify, you can mention something that you did was good. But if you're going to mention something you did was good, if you want to bring other people to Christ, you better talk about as well some of the things that you did that you know was wrong. Don't brag about how much liquor you drank. Brag about who took the liquor away from you. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. <laughs> That's why I, I, Deacon Adams, I was thinking the other day, we got to find a way to find out what these people are celebrating communion on on social media. We, we don't want them drinking the wrong stuff. <laughs> but they had a supper celebrating the second life of Lazarus. Now, there's a lot of suppers in the Bible. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but four of the suppers are this. There's the Passover supper. And as stated, we read about that on the second Sundays. And any of these deacons will be glad to tell you about that Passover supper. But then there is this supper that we're talking about here in John chapter 12. This is the supper celebrating the second life of Lazarus. They had already called the undertaker. They had already paid for his burial. He was already in the grave, but he heard a voice saying, Lazarus, come forth. The next supper is what we were talking about on every second Sunday. We have communion. This table says, this do in remembrance of me. In the old church, whatever Sunday that church celebrated the Lord's Supper was the highest attendance of the entire month. That's because Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. If my father wanted to bring in one of those uh, skilled expository preachers, he would invite him on Communion Sunday. On Communion Sunday, we put chairs down the aisles. Sometimes in Communion Sunday, it was standing room only. Sometimes in Communion Sunday, they had to move folk into the Sunday school area, and that was our overflow. That's because we honored the words of Jesus of this do in remembrance of me. It's not a snack, it's a supper. 
we celebrate that as Jesus died and rose again, so should we also walk in the newness of life. There are things that should have been taken off of my credit report. But you know what they do? They don't both stay on your report for seven years. What they do, they change one letter or one number. And they sell that information to someone else and trying to constantly punish you for the same thing over and over again. You buy a house, you buy a car, they'll take it off, but then as soon as you make the purchase, they put it back on. But I'm so glad that in salvation, if the Son has made you free, you are free indeed. I'm so glad that there's going to be another son in New Jerusalem. He says, I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to drink from the living water. I'm going to walk and not get tired. I'm going to fly and never falter. Yes, when I get home, the welcome table, the Passover supper, Lazarus supper, the communion supper, but the supper at the welcome table in New Jerusalem. That's why I, I didn't get too upset when the Waterford went out of business and we couldn't have our banquet for 2020 because of COVID-19. Because I'm going to a banquet that they can't cancel. <laughs> Jesus will be waiting. Yes. Sky shall unfold and manifest glory. The dead in Christ are going to rise, and we which remain and are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. You remember the other, uh, other Sunday, if we were here and there were folks in this service that had passed on and we could see them again, we wouldn't want to leave here. But even though we can't see them down here, we will see them over there. This supper for Lazarus is Martha served. You know, Martha was always serving. And uh, there are people in the church, they're so busy doing church work, they never get around to Christian work. Mm. There was a little moan to that amen. It's good to do church work. Church work has to be done. We have this building. Building needs to be maintained. We have members. Members need us to check on them and see about them. And so all that is good, but you, you need to get down to the Christian work of bringing others to Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord knows I, I love my son. I love my daughter. Uh, they're good children. Uh, but I'm getting older now. I I want some grandchildren. <laughs> huh? And, uh, y'all pray for me. And the thing is, God, he wants his children to bring more children. And, and we need to at least make references to people who know Christ so that they can go and bring more people to Christ. Amen. Martha served, but she was serving the physical being. 
Well, where was Lazarus? Well, Lazarus was at the table because they came to look at him. Huh? May, may have been some vendors there as well said, we, we had canceled your account because they said you was dead. Now, when you gonna pay us? <laughs> they wanted to come see Lazarus. Well, where was Mary? Mary was at his feet. She took this expensive perfume and she anointed his feet with her hands. And then she wiped his feet with her hair. You know, there's someone else like Mary. Uh, her name was Ruth. And Ruth was instructed to place herself at the feet of Boaz. And you got women today, frustrated, single woman, going around telling people, I ain't going to throw myself at his feet. <laughs> oh, that's why you buy yourself. <laughs> you don't, you don't supposed to worship a man, but you don't supposed to destroy him either. Amen. And you say, well, Reverend, here you go with wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Well, yeah. But see, the Bible also said, for wives and husbands to submit themselves one to the other. Amen. Amen. We ought to be making each other better. Amen. Huh? There's some wives you better not say nothing about their husband. Huh? And that's why Mary was blessed. That's why Ruth was blessed. Huh? It's getting quiet in here. Some of these older women who have been married 50 and 60 years can tell you how to be a godly wife. Amen. Amen. Don't listen to those women at the salon. <laughs> who don't even have a man themselves. Now why would you ask a woman who don't have a man how to get a man? You don't go to a bald-headed man asking how to grow hair. You don't see someone walking and say, where can I get a car? Huh? Go to someone who God has blessed to be a loving spouse for decades and find out what they do. I know one time, my parents, by the time my dad passed, my parents had been married for 63 years. And when they were married around 30 years, they said, hmm, Sister Johnson, you've been married to Reverend Johnson for 30 years? She said, yes, I would have left years ago, but I didn't have no bus fare. <laughs> and I'm glad Mama didn't have no bus fare. And they remained married for 63 years. Mary anointed his feet and then wiped his feet with her hair. Now, women, I'm not telling you to take your hair and wipe some man's feet. I'm not telling you that, but if you have an extra wig, <laughs> maybe you can help a brother out. If, if you have an old wig that you don't use no more. <laughs> that wasn't in the notes. <laughs> but it's more so than the fact that she wiped his feet with her hair. It's the perfume that she used represents our praise. Amen. Stay right there. Stay right there. 
lot of times when people come to church, you got to jack them up, you got to psych them up, you have to pump them up. But the Bible says, I will enter into his gates with, that's a prepositional phrase, with thanksgiving. I will enter into his gates. Enter into means you had the praise before you got there. You know when we ask for clothes for Central Union Mission, you don't go to the store and buy new clothes. You actually take clothes from your home. And they say, what are those clothes in that bag for? I'm going to take these clothes to church, and the men are going to take the clothes to Central Union Mission. And that's how it ought to be with your praise. What's in those bags? Well, that, those bags are filled with praise. <laughs> Well, what is, are the, is the praise for the Dallas Cowboys? No! Is the praise for the Washington football team? No! I got praise that I have already been collecting all week long, and come Sunday morning, I'm gonna take all of this praise into the house of the Lord. I'm gonna enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah! It was an expensive bottle. Your testimony is expensive. Pour it out on Jesus. Take your testimony and let people know how good he's been. You should have some extravagant praise. Don't, don't bring no cheap praise to God's house going around saying, what about them boys? What about them? God has been good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lift up his name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof. And be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's all pour something on Jesus. Let's all sit at his feet. Because the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. And all the saints and the angels shall sit at his feet. And be blessed. What we need to learn that we need to have a banquet for Jesus. We need to celebrate him every week. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They are new every morning. Now, I want to close by telling you this. Jesus had done great things. The fact that Lazarus was yet alive again showed that Jesus had done great things. But what happened was they were so angry with Jesus, they were even going to kill Lazarus because Jesus raised him from the dead. You know, the only folks who are going to love you are those who love Jesus. The only people going to treat you right are the ones who want to treat God right. The only one who really cares about you is the ones who really care about Christ. Because anyone who separates you from God's word, God's will, and God's way, they're not your friend. They are your adversary. When you separate someone from God, it's like closing both nostrils and their mouth so you can't breathe. You need air to breathe, but you also need God to live. And when they separate you from God, they have pointed you towards death. So give God glory and give God praise. He has done great things. Healed you from colds and influenza. 
that he has God ever delivered you from a migraine disturbance? Has the doctor ever told you you had heart disease, but you're still here? Have, have you been told you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes, but you still got up this morning? Have they ever been diagnosed with cancer, but somehow you're still around? Have you ever had a stroke, a seizure, or an infection, yet God has blessed you to come into the house of the Lord? Did you ever fall or faint or have heart failure, but he still allowed your golden moments to roll on just a little while longer that other folks just gave up the ghost and died. But early this morning, even before the alarm clock went off, God woke you up and you opened two little gifts toward your eyes and you still had sight to see and ears to hear. You still could walk and you still could take things into your hands. How many people have he put food on your table? Gave you water when you're thirsty? How many are here this morning that know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you may ask or think according to the power that works in you? Give God glory. Give him praise. He has done great things. is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. I don't know why I got up so early this morning, but what happened was uh, there's one site on Facebook where they try to deal with church humor. And how many of y'all know that what they put on there is not always funny? Amen. So this morning, someone was, uh, they had a drawing of someone putting an ear stopper in their ear. And they said, this is what I feel like doing every time I hear someone pray and say, Daddy, God. And other people laugh. Or they put emojis up of laughter. And some people say, oh, that gets on my nerves. Oh, it makes my, me sick. Then I wrote, when you're looking through the Greek language, The word Abba, Father, translates to Daddy, God. They were laughing because they didn't realize that God didn't die to be our supervisor. God didn't die to be our boss. Jesus died that we might be able to say, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, where we could say, Abba, Father, Daddy, God. I don't know about you, but at 305 East Raymond Avenue, we didn't go around the house saying, Father, may I borrow the car. We had a closer relationship than that. We said, Daddy, can I use your car? Daddy. I'm hungry. Daddy, I don't feel well. And when he would come home late after the second job, we would say, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Because we were just so happy to see him. And if you do not know him as Daddy God, if you cannot say, Abba, Father. We invite you to know him today. Give your life to Jesus. For he that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son 
has not life. The Bible tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen? Amen. Everybody on my right, do you know Jesus as Lord? Look at those hands go up. Going all the way to the back of the church. Everybody on this side knows Jesus as Lord? You know, according to today's sermon, just by those hands going up, we should have some dinner. <laughs> just like Lazarus, we're on our second life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We hope everyone on social media has been able to raise their hands as well. And we never canceled that banquet at Waterford. The Waterford canceled us. One day, we are gonna to get together. It's gonna to be a new life celebration. You can just put on the finest clothes that you can find and we want to get together. And I hope they don't have none of that modified chicken. <laughs> That's the same chicken at KFC. They just put gravy on it. I want us to have something good so we can celebrate new life in Christ. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible says, you shall be saved. Give God glory, give him praise.